Okay, hello everyone. So today we're going to be talking about the clause complex. Before we go on, we are going to refresh our memory a little bit about the difference between a sentence and a clause, which will be very useful in understanding what a clause complex is. Okay, in traditional grammar, we know what a sentence is. Basically, it is something that has a, a subject and a verb. And usually, we divide it into three different things. Uh, the simple sentence, which has only one subject and one verb. The compound sentence, the one that has more than two clauses. And the complex sentence, which is basically the same. But what is the difference between compound and complex sentence? A compound sentence is combined by a coordinating conjunction. Basically, um, you use the conjunction like and, but, or to combine two different clauses. And a complex sentence, you use conjunctions such as although, when, while, however, therefore, and other conjunctions. In coordinating sentences, in compound sentences, both clauses have the same weight or in other words you want to say that you can actually understand it without the conjunction in the complex sentence it is quite different why because in Bahasa Indonesia you know that this kind of sentence has an Indu kalimat and an anak kalimat the main clause and the modifying clause this basically corresponds with uh, the clauses in functional grammar. So the simple sentence is the same as the clause simplex in, uh, in functional grammar, which means that there is only one subject and one verb. And yeah, that is all about the clause simplex. The clause complex, if you can see here, they are dif it is divided into two, the parataxis and the hypotaxis. Now, let's make this simple. The parataxis in functional grammar is basically the compound sentence in traditional grammar. So, parataxis is compound sentence and the hypotaxis is the complex sentence. Today, we are going to focus on the clause complex. But then we are going to divide this again. We are going to try to analyze this again by differentiating between what a clause complex is what a clause simplex is take a look at these two sentences dodo kicked the bucket at three in the morning so that is the first sentence my question is it a simple clause or is it a complex clause Let's see the subject and the verb in the sentence. Here, we have dodo as the subject and we have kicked as the verb. At 3 in the morning is a circumstantial information. It doesn't have um, a subject of a, a, or a verb, which means that this is a simple sentence. Of course, in functional grammar, we don't use that kind of term. We use the word clause simplex. Now, of course, I need to explain to you when I said that Dodo kicked the bucket at 3 in the morning, I didn't mean it uh, quite literally. I didn't mean that he woke up at 3 in the morning and kicked the, a bucket uh, in the middle of the night, waking the neighbors up using his foot. No, when I say somebody kicked up the bucket, it actually means that somebody dies. So when I said Dodo kicked the bucket at three in the morning, I want to say idiomatically that Dodo died at three in the morning. Now take a look at the second sentence. Dodo kicked the bucket when his wife was on the phone. So this is uh, a kind of ironic sentence. So somebody died, but his wife was talking to somebody else on the phone. 
In this sentence, you can see that there are two subjects. The first one is Dodo. The second subject is his wife. And then there are also two verbs in it. The first one is kicked and the second one is was. Now, if a clause or if a sentence has more than one clause, we call it the clause complex. So, when you compare these two sentences, both the ones that are underlined, they are basically talking about the same thing, the same circumstantial information about time. But in this one, the circumstance of time is given in the form of adverb of time. In this one, it is given in the form of another clause. And this is our main focus of the analysis, the clause complex. When analyzing clause complexes, there are two systems that you need to see. The first one is the taxis. We talked about this earlier. And the second one is the logical semantic. Basically, the taxis only decides uh, whether or not, sorry, whether this one is a parataxis or a hypotaxis. The main information is stored in the logical semantic system. Is it is the clause talking about uh, something that somebody says? Is it about an idea, op opinion, thoughts? Or is it only giving example or giving information about time and space? So, because taxes is a lot easier and that is the first thing that you need to do. So, we are going to talk about taxes first. Okay, taxes. Taxes is divided again into two, the parataxis and the hypotaxis. The parataxis or the compound sentence is combined using the conjunction for, and, uh, nor, but, yet, so, or, yeah, things that what we call in our, our writing class as the fanboys. Yeah, you may want to take a look again at your handout, uh, your first semester handout on writing. I think the compound sentence was in chapter 5, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, okay. So, of course, in functional grammar, this sentence has to clause. You have to divide it. This is how you divide it. I love Neneng, but she loves Mbe. Now, before we label the taxes, labeling parataxis is easy. But before that, I'm going to tell you how to label the clauses first. So, I love Neneng, but she loves Mbe. This one uh, will be labeled like this first. So, there are two, word, two numbers in between the brackets. Two numbers in between the brackets, I love Neneng, but she loves Mbe. Take a look. The first number is written in Arabic number, the one that we use all the time. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. The second one uses the Roman number. What's this for? Okay. The first one, the one with the Arabic number, is for the number of sentence. So, if your text has five sentences and the sentence I love Neneng but she loves Mbe comes first, it means that this is sentence number one. So, both of them, because they are the same sentence, is labeled one using Arabic number. The Roman number is the number of clause in that sentence. Because there are only two, so we label it one using the Roman and two using the Roman. What about if there are three clauses in this sentence? Just add one, another I. I love Neneng, but she loves Mbe, but I don't care. I love Neneng, one I, but she loves Mbe, one, one I, I, and then 
but I don't care, one I, I, I. So again, if this sentence is found in the fourth sentence, you will label it four. But the number of clause will goes on, will start again at number one. Sorry, at number I. Parataxis, but so that is how you mark the sentences and the clauses. Now on to labeling the taxes. The taxes system use two different types of numbering. The parataxis use the Arabic number, which is because there are two here, number one and number two. Not that difficult to understand, I hope. And actually, parataxis is quite easy because all you need to do is label the first clause that comes with number one. So basically, whichever clause comes first, that will be number one in parataxis. Klausa apa apapun yang datang duluan, klausa apapun yang ditulis duluan, itu yang dikasih nomor satu. So, if I write, she loves me first, yeah, then that will be number one. No problem with that. Okay, so parataxis taxes, again, is quite easy. Whichever comes first, you label it number one. Hypotaxis, on the other hand, it is quite different. Let's see. So I use the same main clauses. I love Neneng, she loves Mbe. Take a look at the conjunction that I use. Although. So basically, the only element that is different here is only one word, although. But, let's go back. It actually creates a different logical meaning. When I say I love Neneng but she loves Mbe, it expresses a little bit of regret. Oh, I love you, but apparently you don't love me back. I, you love another person and it makes me sad. So, yeah, it it expresses a little bit of regret. It, it expresses sadness. But in the second one, I love Neneng although she loves Mbe, it actually expresses something else. Uh, for me, perhaps, it expresses an unconditional love. Oh, I don't care whoever it is you love. I don't care that you don't love me back. I still love you anyway. So, yeah, when we divide this, it is quite the same at the beginning. I love Neneng, although she loves me. And we label it number one I, number two, number one I, I for the number of sentence. The hip hypotaxis, um... Analysis, the label for hypotaxis uses the Greek letter, the small Greek letter, the alpha, the beta, the gamma, blah, 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 until the omega. I hope you won't find any sentences that is that long until you have to reach the omega, of course. Now, different from parataxis, when you label a hypotaxis, First, you need to find the main clause. You need to find the indu kalimat. What does it do? Because in parataxis, whatever comes first will be labeled number one. But in hypotaxis, the one that will be labeled with an alpha is only the main clause. The easiest way to find the main clause is usually the clause without any conjunction in it. So in here, apparently, I love Neneng is the main clause. So let's label it with alpha. The second clause will be labeled beta. The third clause will be labeled gamma. The fourth clause, if any, will be labeled delta. Okay, I'm, I'm, I can go on, but of course, it is not necessary. So, what if, what if I switch the sentence? Although she loves Mbe, so that is the first clause, I love Neneng. Where should you put the alpha? 
is it going to be with the although? No, it will still be with I love Mimming because that is the main clause. So yeah, let's review a little bit. Parataxis, the label will be in, in Arabic number one, two, three, whichever comes first will be labeled number one. In hypotaxis, we use the small Greek number alpha, beta, gamma until the omega and the symbol alpha will only be used with the main clause, not the anakalimat. We use it with the induk kalimat. And that is all about the taxes. Now let's move on to the logical semantic. So the logical semantic system is divided into two big ones. The, ex uh, the expansion and the projection. Basically, what the logical semantic system does is to help us understand more about the stuff that happens in the clause. Now, let's talk first about the expansion. The expansion is divided into three. The extension, the elaboration, and the enhancement. Extension is basically addition and variation, but you don't really need to worry about that. I love Neneng, but she loves Mbe. This is an example of an extension. I love Neneng, but she loves Mbe. Of course, let's label it again. So you know that the word but is a system for parataxis. So you should label it with number one and two. Number one and two. Now take a look at the symbol plus. This is the symbol that you use to decide whether it is an extension, an elaboration, or whatever it is you want to say. But basically extension is if you add or contrast something. Now, I think I, I'm going to make this simple for you. Usually, um, the sentences that use extensions are the sentences with the conjunctions and, but, or, or. Hanya kalimat-kalimat yang kata sambungnya and, but, atau, or. So where do you have to put this label? Usually, num uh, the first one, number one or the alpha in the hypotactic, it is free of any labels. So here, the label will come in number two. Not two plus, but you have to say plus two. This is extension. The second one is enhancement. I love Neneng, although she loves Mbe. I love Neneng, although she loves Mbe. Again, let's label the numbers. And then I love Neneng is the alpha, although she loves Mbe is the beta. Enhancement doesn't come in the beta. Sorry, doesn't come in the alpha. It comes with the beta, the gamma, the theta, the delta, whatever. So here you go. So basically, enhancement are the topping or the accessories which will explain to you more about the issue. It deals with temporal information, spatial information, the manner, the causal, conditional, or concessive. Concessive means um, contrasting evidence. Let's see. Saya tiba di sini kemarin jam 4 sore. The first one Saya tiba di sini kemarin jam 4 sore is actually a clause simplex. So if you want to enhance that, if you want to top that, if you want to give more explanation about what enhancement is, you will say saya tiba di sini waktu ibu-ibu sedang aerobik. This one is a complex sentence. I arrived here when those ladies are doing we're doing aerobics. I arrived here yesterday at 4. This one is clause simplex. This one is circumstantial information which is given in the form of clause. I will go anywhere. Circumstance of place. But then, if I say I will go wherever you go, 
still circumstance of place but in the form of clause which means that you enhance the understanding of the text anywhere is wherever you want to go I come here for you I come here because I want to make you happy you give additional information so basically enhancement is to give additional information that has something to do with place with time with condition or with reasons enhancement itu memberikan informasi tambahan dalam bentuk klausa supaya kita lebih paham tentang kalimat atau klausa tersebut that is enhancement Now, the next one is elaboration. Elaboration is basically giving example or uh, saying some uh, the same thing in two different ways. Kayaknya saya stres berat. Saya pening-pening dan susah tidur. So, in this sentence, this person is actually explaining more about how the stress affects them. Kayaknya saya stres berat nih. Ciri-ciri stresnya seperti apa? Yaitu, saya pening-pening dan susah tidur. So, let's put this into two different clauses. Kayaknya saya stres berat. Saya pening-pening dan susah tidur. Okay, let's label the sentence. Ini kalimat ke-9, klausa pertama. Kalimat ke-9, klausa kedua. Now, take a look at the sentence. Kayaknya saya stres berat. Saya pening-pening dan susah tidur. Do you think is it? Do you think this is a, a parataxis or a hypotaxis? Now, see the semicolon here. It is one of the um, characteristics of a parataxis clause. So you will label it number one and number two. So, stress berat is basically a clarification of, sorry, saya pening-pening dan susah tidur is basically a clar clarification on the stress. Therefore, in number two, you have to add an equal symbol. So, if your question is, Miss, bisa nggak sih kalau tanda-tandanya kayak kali tambah sama dengan itu ditaruhnya di nomor satu, Jarang, hampir nggak pernah. Di nomor satu itu, nomor satu dan alfa itu biasanya nggak ada label apa-apa lagi. Cuma benar-benar satu dan alfa. So, the logical semantic system only happens in number two, number three, the beta, the gamma, and the other things. Okay, so that is expansion, basically. So, we have three, the extension, the elaboration, and the enhancement. The extension itu hanya boleh dipakai di kalimat para taktik karena kata sambungnya juga cuma boleh tiga, and, but, or. Enhancement itu menambah pengetahuan, menambah informasi tentang apa yang kamu pelajari mengenai kalimat tersebut. And elaboration is basically telling you the examples or clarifying what you want to say. Saya marah berat. Saya banting-banting kursi dan meja. It is basically the same thing. How do I get angry? Or how or what do I do to express my anger? So that is using elaboration. Saya makan bakso waktu gempa bumi kemarin. It is basically an information about time. So it will use the X symbol, the enhancement. Saya kurang tidur dan saya sakit kepala. Because we have the word done there, the word an, so it is not an elaboration because it is seen as two different things. It will be an extension. So you have to use the symbol plus. Okay, now on to the last one. Okay, I'm going to skip this. This is an example. Okay, on to the last one. He said that he would leave this city soon pay attention to this one he said 
this is no longer part of the expansion this is part of the projection semant uh, logical semantic system so the projection logical semantic system consists of two things the locution which deals with whatever it is you say and the idea which deals with whatever it is you think about so in here of course because there is the word he said this is the verbal locution he said he would leave this city soon let's label it now when you find this kind of sentence you have to decide whether or not this is a hypotactic and yes this one is a hypotactic this one is the alpha this one is the beta how do you know well basically any indirect speeches will be considered alpha and beta and any direct speeches the one with the dialogue tag will be labeled as parataxis he said he will leave this city soon okay this is something that you say so in writing classes when you want to write a dialogue you have to use a double quotation mark basically the same sama add a double quotation mark before the word beta before the letter beta before number two jadi jangan ditaruh sesudah quotation mark dulu baru label this is the locution still the same he said i will leave this city soon direct speech kalimat langsung Kalimat langsung, direct speech, he said, I will leave the city soon. Let's label it. This is the second, uh, the seventh sentence of the text. Now, like I said before, direct speech will warrant the paratactic. So, in paratactic uh, or parataxis, you label it one and two. Which one? should you label as the verbal one which one sh should you label with the double quotation mark number two correct so that is the verbal now in the next one the mental see he thought the city was cool he thought this city was cool. This is about thinking. Now, perhaps you remember that in transitivity analysis, we talk about projection system, which can happen in the mental and verbal process. And gentlemen, ladies, these are actually the same. In the clause complex, the projection can only happen in the verbal process and in the mental cognition process he thought you see because you think using your brain this is mental connection uh, cognition he thought that the city was cool the, he thought this city was cool this is an I, indirect speech and like i said before indirect speech uses the alpha and the beta and if what you say is labeled with double quotation mark, the thing that you think about will be labeled with only one quotation mark, the single quotation mark. Again, in direct speech, you will use the alpha and the beta. What about this? This is still some thing that you think about so you need to pay attention to the verb thought said so if you scream it will be a locution if you think about it it will be an idea how do you label this one he thought the city is cool label the sentence and the clauses and then what kind of sentence is this is it a hypotaxis or a parataxis 
if you say that this is a parataxis, then you're right. So he thought it comes first, you label it one. The city is cool, it comes the second, you label it number two. And just what like just like what you did with the mental other mental idea, uh, mental logical semantic system, you have to add one single quotation mark. Okay, let's take a look at this example. They said you've got your to have your blood tested. Okay, I'm going to upload the PowerPoint without my uh, speech so that perhaps you want to see more uh, of this examples later. But we're going to skip this for the sake of brevity. Okay, this one is as well. Now, let's deal with more examples. Words is such a twitch tickling problem to me all my life. I don't like it, he said. How many clauses can you find can you find here? If you if you say three, you're correct. But how do you label it? Let's take a look. Words is such a twitch tickling problem to me all my life. I don't like it, he said. Now, you may wonder why I'm not labeling it as one, two, and three. Now, let's take a look. Basically, this one, from this example, from the words, words until the word it, it talks about something that somebody said, right? So, this one, the whole thing here is connected with the words he said. Dari kata word sampai kata it, itu semuanya berhubungan dengan he said. I don't like it is not directly connected with this he said, but it is direct connected with the first clause that is why you need to label it two times okay both of them appear at the beginning so of course both of them have to be labeled one I don't like it is connected to the first sentence saya nggak suka apa yang tidak disuka words is such a twi twitch tickling problems blah 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 jadi dia di Kasih label nomor dua. Why is it sama dengan? Why is it an equal? Because it gives us um, a precise feelings about what you want to say. So wor words is a problem for me and I don't like it. So I don't like it. But then the whole thing is actually a verbal process because it is something that you said. So it is a projection. He said something. What is the something? Words blah, blah, blah until it. So that is why it is labeled too. So when you read a narrative text, when you read a story, usually you will also find a sentence like this. Okay, it's missing. Ah, here you go. Words, he said, is such a twitch tickling problem to me all my life. So basically, words, kata words, dan sisa kalimatnya, it is one single sentence. But because in narrative writing, you can actually uh, twitch it you can actually change uh, every single thing about it so this is actually fine but of course it makes it difficult for us to analyze it in functional grammar so here's what you do words number one and then because it is uh, spliced terbagi oleh kata he said 
we put the he said using this words he said and then is such a pitch tickling blah 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 is it going to be number three or number one or number two it is going to be number one again how so you may want to ask because it is the same sentence words is the subject is is still the same verb so it is still number one it is different with this in this one you will have words is such a twitch tickling problems to me all my life that is number one we've established that and then it is divided with a he said beda ya sama yang atas it is divided with a he said so it is number two what about i don't like it because it is connected again with this one we label it this i don't like it i know it looks complicated but once you do it on your own it won't be that complicated you will learn to see how things are connected logically and if you can see things how things are connected logically it will be easier for you to decide which one is number one which one is number two which one is more connected to which which one is the alpha which one is the beta things like that okay this is another example adult said i love meme then i love lina because she is so pretty so if you see here i actually divided the colors because i want you to see how things are logically connected adult said is connected directly to i love meme I love my May is connected directly to then I love Lena. But it is not connected to because she is so pretty. So the word adult said is not connected directly to because she is so pretty. The word I love my May it is not directly connected to because she she is so pretty. The one the clause that is directly connected to uh, because she is so pretty is then I loved Lena and therefore we label it like this why is it alpha and beta miss because I love Lena because she is so pretty so this one is the main clause because she is so pretty is the reason and because reason is adding information you add an X Okay, so like I said before, I'm going to add this presentation uh, to your Google Classroom, the one without my uh, speech, without, my without the video, so that perhaps you can take a look at this. And yeah, if you have any questions, we're going to discuss it on, in our classes. Uh, we're going to do a virtual meeting later on in Slack, on Slack sorry so per usual group a will be on tuesday group b will be on wednesday yeah i hope you you save your questions for later and i'm going to try to ex re-explain it again in a in a more friendly textual chatting way and okay then see this example will be uploaded later and yeah meanwhile i'll see you later Thank you very much.